episode of my TARDIS tutorial. This episode will cover a feature where if you regenerate inside the TARDIS, it'll take damage and kind of explode. Um, this is going to tie in with the TARDIS energy feature. So yeah, let's begin. So if we were to regenerate outside, I just want to show you this real quick. That if we regenerate outside, everything seems normal. There are no explosions or anything. You can see I regenerated as normal, my face changed, um, but no uh, violence, explosions, fire, anything like that. Uh, but if we go inside the TARDIS, something different will happen. So this is a new interior made by uh, the Red Gamer when he came onto my server the other day. But uh, I'll just show you what happens if you regenerate inside the TARDIS. See, it's going to go a little bit further. There's fire and explosions, and the energy is taking damage. And once the smoke clears, we have a totally different interior. And if we go outside, the exterior is changed as well. As you can see. So yeah. Basically, the TARDIS will take damage, the energy will get drastically reduced, and the um, interior and exterior will be changed. This is obviously to mimic in the show all the time, especially in a new series where the Doctor's regenerated, it's damaged the TARDIS pretty darn badly, and it's had to repair with a new interior and exterior. So how does this all work? Well, it's in here, and it's not amazingly complex, maybe a little bit, um, but as you can see, it all kind of starts right here. And this is testing for executing as regen respawn, uh, which is obviously the armor stand for regeneration. If entity at a tag equals inside, tag equals time ward, scores health 20 and deaths 1. So this is searching for someone who is in the process of regenerating. Um, this is just like with uh, the last couple episodes on regeneration. And then the big difference obviously is that we have tag equals inside. So that is a tag that is applied when a player goes inside the TARDIS and if you don't have that feature it's just as simple as adding that when they use the TARDIS key and making that tag get removed when they leave the TARDIS. If the player is inside the TARDIS and obviously Ari Time Lord who's in the process of regenerating and if so it'll activate this and you need this red bit on because this is going to be a clock so it goes out via this repeater and then eventually it's going to go back in via this one creating a clock that is constantly on whenever this is active. So what does the clock actually do? Well it does a bunch of things. First off we've got some particles and you just can just do any particle. I did a mixture of flash and explosion particles at different coordinates throughout the console room. Uh, these are I think just the deltas meaning like what directions do they go out so I just made it go out with like a one in every direction and then this is the speed which I put at zero this is the count of particles and then force is just if you want it to show up if a player doesn't have their particles turned on and then what I did over here is we have scoreboard players remove TARDIS TARDIS energy 800 so you know what that means if you've seen the video on the new power system um, as of this recording I haven't made that video yet but I will, and it'll probably be out by the time this video is. So yeah, just remove any amount of TARDIS energy you want, but I figured this would probably remove quite a bit, because it's just, you've seen the effects of regeneration energy on the show, and it's pretty devastating. Right here, we have, uh, this summons a firework rocket at certain coordinates, and that kind of replicates an explosion as well. Um, if you do lifetime zero, it'll pretty much instantly explode. Um, and then fireworks item, uh, firework rocket, that just means what it like displays as, so you could change this to anything if you wanted to, but it doesn't matter much since we have lifetime zero, so you won't really see it. Um, and then fireworks, and then you do some brackets, and inside here you can do flight, colon one. Um, again, I think that has to do with the flight time, I'm not sure. Uh, explosions, and then you would do some brackets for that, and inside you do type zero, flicker zero, trail zero. There's a lot of stuff you can edit with fireworks. I think I just got this from a website where you can edit custom firework commands. 
um, and then you change your colors. Again, I have no idea what this I means. Um, I can try to find the website and put it in the description, honestly, because that's probably the best way you're going to be able to do this. Um, but yeah, you got different colors for your fireworks, and then you got your fade colors, which I guess is when it changes color, when it fades away, and then silent colon one. Um, and then over here is kind of a similar thing. In fact, it seems to be basically exactly the same, except it's executing at TARDIS Vortex, so that if you go into the Time Vortex view, which I guess you can't during regeneration, so it's a little pointless, but it'll also have uh, explosions going off there as well. And then over here, we have execute at, at E tag equals inside, run play sound, entity dot generic explode, ambient at that player, uh, at their coordinates, volume of three, pitch dot 25, and a minimum volume of one. Uh, that's just to add extra explosion sounds a repeater and then uh, basically just make another firework go off uh, you can either do it in a different place or in the same place I think I did it in a different place but then I did these chain command blocks and they're on chain unconditional always active so they will then go off and this just does another flash particle and this one right here removes a bit more energy <laughs> it removes a lot more energy honestly um, so yeah, this is like one set of explosions, and then wait a moment, that another goes off. Uh, and then it goes through this repeater, which seems to be a lot shorter, and uh, this runs these, which is just running the smoke particles, um, executing at the player, uh, running a particle of smoke at their coordinates, and then this is again kind of the delta for the particles. This is the speed, this is the count, and this is whether you want it to be forced or not. And we just do the same thing, I think, with flame particles, yep. So again, you can change around a lot of the values on these. You can even change what particle it is, but this just makes it look, obviously, as if the TARDIS is kind of exploding. And at that point, it goes back to the beginning, so that will shut this off, and then it'll turn back on and the cycle around again. So yeah, that's kind of how all that works. Um, what is this over here? Well, this is um, actually resembling something that will happen at the end of the cycle. Um, so this is its own separate comparator that'll go off. And then this starts this long chain of repeaters. And the deal about this is that it's actually the same length as the chain uh, in the regeneration room. So the key is to make this last as long as a regeneration would. So you start regenerating, you're, you got your, you're looking at the armor stand, um, and then it goes all the way through this the exact same amount of time. And it does these three commands. This one goes afterwards, obviously. Oh, I guess it's four. Uh, so what are these ones? This is executing in the overworld. Run TP at E name equals TARDIS, limit equals one. So those coordinates, which is actually the spawn of the map, because um, I just thought it made sense that the TARDIS would kind of crash land somewhere, and it made sense to be the spawn of the map, but you can make that wherever you want. Um, and obviously this only works when it's in its normal non-dematerialized state. Again, that's another thing you can change if you really wanted, but uh, I just thought this kind of made sense. Um, and then this is going to run execute at the chameleon cycle armor stand, run TP itself uh, two blocks on the x-axis, and that is obviously just going to cycle through a chameleon circuit option, um, just so that you can obviously have that exterior change, and then uh, this, I think, is the same thing, yep, but for the interior cycle armor stand, and it's just teleporting that on the z-axis, just depending on, like, uh, where, obviously, what direction you make it go in when you cycle, um, and then you do a slight delay, and then kill at E type equals item, because that's just something I do normally when I switch interiors anyway, because if you have ones like well, the interior we're using right now, in fact, um, and they have, like, iron doors. Those will actually break when you switch interiors, which is just a weird side effect, so I just did that for the sake of fixing that. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's everything. I'll just show you this one last time. So again, if we come outside and try to regenerate while well, outside, nothing will happen to the TARDIS. As you can see, there are no particles, no explosions, nothing, um, and no energy depletion. But, uh, if we were to go inside the TARDIS and regenerate, it's going to be a different story. 
Okay, I gotta go quick because this effect is not too good. Uh, there we go. As you can see, the TARDIS is really not doing too well. Uh, you really want to be very careful <laughs> and try not to regenerate inside the TARDIS, probably. But as you can see, we've been switched to the classic police box or classic uh, interior, I should say. And if we go to the exterior, let's see what it is. And we've been switched to the original police box from the beginning of the tutorial. But yeah, that's really all there is to it. This has been my video on the TARDIS uh, regeneration damage, I guess you could say. Um, but yeah, uh, that is all. I have been Tebo2. Be sure to subscribe to follow my Instagram, Tebo2IT. To follow my Twitter, which is also Tebo2IT. To join my Discord. And lastly, to have a nice day. Goodbye.